also, I want to, because you're in, you know, you're sort of in the weeds on a daily basis. So I would love to hear your your honest opinion on what is driving the premiums. Let's stick to, to the CPM premiums in premium video, mm -hmm. okay? Is it is it in a programmatic construct and the use of data and third-party data, set, data sets and those sort of, you know, incremental bump humps on the buy? Or is it truly due to shortages? And I, I know it's a little bit both, but I'm just saying if you had to say what was the primary driver, which one of those two would you choose? I mean, I think it would be, I think it would be due to shortages, but I don't think just in terms of, of a lack of inventory, but I think um, a lack of our abil ability to verify the premium nature of so much inventory that's out there. Uh, I think people like Videology are doing a really good job of identifying those places and bringing that together for advertisers to kind of approach. But I'm sorry, is that? A, but is that about adjacency and a true sort of you know evaluation of the quality of the content, or is that about viewability? Um, I think it's more about I think about the content and viewability, right? Okay. I think all of these these factors are going into it. Um, TV, right, whether or not someone's actually watching the screen, it's, it's one screen, it's a shared experience, everybody's kind of tuning in and, and, and paying attention to what's going on. Online, when you can have 100 different tabs open, you can be scrolling, you can be all over the place, you can be on three devices at any given time, we're dealing with just a, a much more fragmented uh, space and much more fragment, fragmented sense of attention. Um, the other disadvantage of, of the digital medium is that you can measure everything. Um, and as a result, we're being asked to. Um, and until we can actually prove some of those things out, I think that there is definitely a kind of streak of, of traditionalism in terms of moving from TV to, to online. Um, I think that makes sense. I think it's important to you know, walk before you run. You, you don't really want to stumble over these things. And I think that that's ultimately what's driving the premiums around FEP sites and around just other premium content that, that's very well known. I moderated a panel last week and I was, I was surprised, not necessarily by the statement, but more surprised by the fact that it hasn't been discussed more often. There was a, a buyer that was on my panel, and he spoke to the ever-increasing cost of fraud prevention and sort of, you know, and we haven't really talked about that, right? But that's kind of the data play is that if you're paying a premium for targeting and dressability, all that stuff, you're probably marrying that with at least, you know, a fair, decent, um, matched premium on actually ensuring that you're delivering it to the person that you paid to deliver it to in the mm -hmm. first place, right? right? Where does that come into the conversation? Well, I think that's part of, you know, the whole third-party verification, audience verification conversation that, that we were just having. Um, you know, in the TV world, there's a very strong idea that if the people who you paid to reach don't see it, you don't pay for it. Um, and we have had to adapt to that online, and I think that's an important tenet that you know we've been trying to live up to over the past year. So, you know, in terms of both verifying, you know, whether or not someone's falling into a particular demographic, verifying that they're a human at all is is obviously a very important element of of, of those solutions and what we're working with. And you know, Zaxis um, as a solution and videology we know as well works very closely with. A lot of you know kind of quality controls out there to make sure that 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 is happening, and also helping to lead and push uh, some of these solutions where we need them as well. Right. Um, we're close to the advertisers, we're close to the agencies. Uh, they make no qualms about letting us know what they need, and and we try to help apply that pressure to the ecosystem as well. Yeah, but Evan, I just want to take a step back because you're in the weeds all day, so I just mm -hmm. want to sort of be very clear and specific for anyone that's you know kind of watching this and maybe isn't in the weeds as much as you are. Um, it's a separate line item on the cost, right? I mean, like, if we look at sort of the cost of executing a digital video buy, specifically programmatic, you know, there's the, the media cost, mm -hmm. right? There's the platform cost, there's the data cost. And then we have this <laughs> accepted practice of third parties that are objective mm -hmm. third parties in digital, of which there's a competitive set from which right. advertisers can choose, which is very different from TV, right? Because there's sort of a generally accepted cadre of individuals that you look to to verify that your TV is being delivered. Right, right. and it, it is an incremental cost, you know, but at the same time, the cost of verification is one that um, I think is important and it justifies itself by, you know, reducing the amount of waste, of wasted money that you're spending elsewhere. And to that point about, you know, the difference between the kind of ecosystem of third-party verifiers um, and TV, it's, it's really early days. Um, in every way, you know, in terms of what digital is doing. And, and again, TV is just such a different experience and such a different medium that it's actually really remarkable to me that we've actually been able to find solutions that are helping solve for some of the problems that TV buyers might have um, in an online world. Um, and I think also as TV approaches 
closer and closer to the, the kind of programmatic space. Mm -hmm. um, and as all screens are starting to be treated the same, you know, all these problems are going to be the same everywhere. And we're going to be able to measure kind of everything, even things that we weren't thinking about before. I think the work that we're doing online in a highly competitive, highly rigorous atmosphere um, is only going to benefit us as all of these things start to converge.